What is going on, my reefing fam? March here. This is Fragbox TV. All right, our road trip continues. Patrick and I, me and Patrick, we are driving to Detroit, and we're going to check out cherry corals. These guys have been farming corals in the USA for more than a decade, and they're going to show us some of the craziest stuff I think we've ever seen to date. Their setup is super simple. It's not extravagant. It's low tech. It's reef keeping basics implemented on a commercial scale, and it really works. I think something like 98% of what they sell is cultured. They're going to share their experiences with us. They're using ESV salt, which is a little bit unusual and really piqued my interest as I'm toying with the idea of changing our own salt brand. They run super high phosphates in some of the tanks and their Acropora are to die for. Thanks again to the owners for taking their time out of the day to show us around. And this is a really cool video. I think um, you're going to enjoy it and we're really excited to share it with you guys. If you're looking for their stuff, it's all available on their site, cherrycorals.com. Or if you're close to Detroit, they have some walk-in, uh, limited walk-in hours. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Fragbox TV. What's going on, my reefing fam? Second stop on our road trip. We are here in Detroit. Actually, it's Livonia, Michigan to be correct. Um, check this store out. As you can see, this is a very well-known store. It's called, uh, I don't know what it's called. They don't have a sign. We'll call it Black Frag Box. I don't know. One, two, four, two, one, Stark, I think, Avenue. But behind this black door is not a strip club. Look at this. What? We have corals. We are here at Cherry Corals. Boom. First thing you are greeted with is this very nice, massive display tank. And one thing that stands out right away, um, besides these beautiful red tip, purpley black, Elegance is the stand. Look at this proper dun, 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 I beam. Build a house on that. I like it. Industrial look and feel. Actually, really nice tank. Check out these torches. Beautiful little torch garden. Some healthy fish. Where are these guys? They're hiding. We'll come back to this tank. We'll come back and talk shit about Max Spec Gyres, which we just did a video review on. Boom. Check it out. This is a proper frag. What did you call it? Frag factory? Coral factory? This is a, this is not your typical warehouse. This is a coral warehouse. Oh man, where do we start? How old is this thing? How long have you been here? I've been here since 2011. 2011, 12, 13, 14, more than a year. <laughs> Quite a few years. Oh man. Patrick, what did you find? What did you find? Uh, heaven. Heaven. Patrick is coral religious. Wow. Okay, where do we even get started? Okay, I always forget to ask this question, so I'll ask it right yeah. before we get started. What are you using for salt? We use ESV. Hey, That's I bet, what I use. I I bet you like that answer. I use ESV We've used ESV since 2010. Really? Okay, so, so this yeah. is going to be an ESV free marketing plug, I guess, because, <laughs> man, the corals in here, we haven't even started, and I can tell you, are... I don't, I don't want to move. I'm good right here. Ridiculous. I'm just on fine right what here. What am I looking at? This is not glass. These are lobster troughs. Lo huh? From, from dolphin fiberglass. Yeah. So, what, too many answers. They're dolphins? They're what? Yep. Dolphin fiberglass. And actually, Jim I like them. from I Catching Coral had ordered all six of these. Yeah. And it all seemed to work out. He, they were supposed to be three foot. And they came four foot. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And how come how come fiberglass instead of traditional glass or acrylic or because it's just super durable. We don't have to clean the glass every day. Oh, no and silicone that's ever going to crack or break or I mean, leak. There's, there's some peeling happening on the outside. Mm -hmm. It's a different finish on the outside, and, and that happens. But for the most part, as long as you're not scraping these these tubs, there is a railroad track about 100 feet behind that garage door. Yeah. And when Oh, no way. Initially, we were a little worried about putting any glass tanks in here, but the ones we have have held up. So My goodness, look at these corals. What are we running here? Looks like some Radeon. G4 oh, Radeon. G4, that's what we use in the shop, too. Only four. You know, it's a little bit surprising um, just for that length. It's eight feet? Nine? Eight feet. Only four. Uh, 450 with all the, all the spectrum up all the way in the middle. Oh my God. Yeah, maybe about 350 out to the side. We think that. Look at these corals. But they're just like one on top of another. It's like Jenga. This is this is this is what true discipline gets you. 
Discipline, water parameters perfect, all the time, on target. Oh my goodness, just perfect. Non-stop. You know what it takes. Clean <laughs> corals, yeah, that's, it's yeah. discipline, right? Yeah. Clean, Not... clean corals when they go in. It's interesting that you have torches um, right next to the acro. <laughs> yeah, they like that spot over there. Lots of flow, huh? Yeah, they grow pretty well. Look at these colors, boom. How long are these lights on for? Uh, about 10 hours a day. And then are you running your own custom cherry corals, magic, uh, Sort of thing, or just coral AB maybe? Uh, I kind of modified the AB plus. Yeah. Oh. So it just I just have a noonday that's, spike that's of guys. everything. Yeah, right. yeah, but that was for the G3s, and then the G4s had double the channel. So then What's this? Your sump? We dropped the white channel. Yeah, those are these are actually for the produce industry, and they're food grade plastics. Right. And one of our uh, wholesalers yeah. used those, and uh, we decided to give them a try. Worked out good. They've been there 16 yeah. years. Yeah. And, uh, Never had any leaks. What a, I like this. Same thing they have running in the front. That's all you need. Some cinder blocks. They're not going to move. They're not going to go anywhere. They get the job done. Are each one of these independent? Yeah, so uh, this this system is tied into the front box. The one behind that wall there. Okay. Wow. And then these ones? And these, every two is a separate system. And, the, and on that side, those three are one system. And this is a quarantine. So, do you, are you selling out of this tank, or growing, or fragging, or a little bit of everything? Everything. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I don't sell the big pieces, that's what I frag off of. And then, uh, typically we'll make frags, put them down here. Let them, let them heal, and they, they go up on the racks for photography. Yes. Like, uh, look at this. Look at this. Pray for Aptasia control. We do yeah, double. We, we do, we do it like once a year. Nice. So, so are you guys importing any acro, or do you have enough in here that you can sustain? No, yeah. We kind of got away from wild acros a couple yeah, years just, back. Just, just different issues. Yeah, no, with I, past, yes. I think the last time, last time we did it, we so these White are all this. actually yeah. farmed and have been video on his super scary bugs that he had in this thing. Yep. I think the last time we got a wild acro was probably like eight years ago. Years ago. Wow. I'm trying some different techniques with uh, putting acros on a, on a little pedestal to get them to grow a little faster. You know, as you start them out with frags. I guess anything that's going to go into these beds has to get go through like a serious yeah. quarantine yeah, dip I, I inspection. Can show you that and go through what we do. Who are you? Kung Pao? Beach bum. So that's a beach bum on your left and a Kung Pao on your right. And then you got a refrap crazy teeth. Mm. Shout out refrap. I didn't realize how valuable refrap corals were. Basically everywhere, U.S. but around the world. But we're so spoiled. It's a 10-minute drive for me. Um, could go over there anytime. I keep hearing rumors that they're out of business or they're not. On the, I think, they don't have the store open anymore. Yeah, yeah, it's, okay. it's transforming into uh, wholesale only, kind of overseas. But. Um, we're so spoiled. He's right there. Actually, right. if you guys like the dog We've been there on the channel, a few times, many years ago. Jay. Yeah. Yeah, he's an awesome guy. Yeah. The, the dog that you guys know and love, Mr. Diggs, was actually a gift from Refraff. So he's yeah, he's actually an RR, one of one dog. I like this. A lot so of stuff we keep redundant just to have grow outs of uh, things. You know, oh my tiles God. Over here, they're in the same corals way back there. The torch corals are just doesn't do very well. Get backups. Redundancy. Do you ever have floods or problems like that kind of stuff in here where you lose stuff? Like we knock on wood, we haven't had too many issues. Knock on steel. <laughs> Look at these hammers. Whoa, who are you? Yeah, over the years you, have, you, you learn ways of keeping everything healthy. And, and you know, water changes, we do water changes. And that doesn't work. This is uh, the chemist. Hello, yes. chemist. Nice to see you again. We met in, where were we? Orlando? Reef of Palooza. It's hard to keep track. Too many trips. To traveling, I'm not working enough. Oh, I'm doing it right now. I'm not at the shop. We're over here. So it looks like you're running radions everywhere, huh? What's that? Light of choice is radion? Uh, yeah, we're gradually kind of switching over a lot to those. Um, we do have some T5s uh, in the shop as well. Some of those are actually like 10, 12 years old. Oh, you don't see too many of these. Yeah. Why, why T5? Yeah. Um, they just aren't a solid, reliable light. They do the job. Look at this. Looks like they really like their max specs. This is the yeah. Gyre 330? No, 250. 300. Yeah, we used to use, uh, we tried out some uh, the, the Ecotech Vortec pump, but this irregular surface over here, I think, was prematurely wearing out the wet sides. Okay. So once these came out, we actually got a few demo units before they were released. 
and we just love them for this type of thing. Oh my God. It throws out that narrow jet of water. It's just are perfect. The, are these Zoas under eight bulbs of T5? We don't run them all at once. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Holy, the uh, color and yeah, size is it's just a, perfect. It's a staggered type of thing. And some are just for photography. We just turn on whites for photography. Most of the time we just run blues for drying. Wow. Are you running carbon on this? No, we never use carbon this entire. Time. How come? Is there a reason why? Ups and downs. I, I feel like if we were using it, it would have to be an all the time kind of thing. Yeah. And it does strip trace elements. I and, uh, So these tanks thing. are so shallow, we're not really concerned too much with the clarity of the yellow in the water. We wouldn't even notice it really. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really matter. I guess the cons outweigh the benefits. I'm kind of leaning towards not running carbon at all. I used yeah. to use some RoboFast media and also had problems with different fast band media. Okay, so like no too. GFO so either. either. Wow. Yeah. Um, so are you water changing these systems? So we're water changing. I do have a, a fuse over there. And then uh, we have pretty high phosphates in a lot of these things. What are you running? Let's go check out. Let's go check out the boards. So on 523, uh, the nitrate was 16 and the phosphates were uh, 0.4. Point, no, wait, no, point point wait point eight one point eight one yeah wow so that's, high. <laughs> it, that's through the roof yep and is that just and that's, that's really the LPS system is, and is that the tester that's SP. getting those numbers yeah oh yeah, that's a, I hand a checker so. Patrick point eight one phosphate he's not listening Patrick's over there he's what like a kid last tank we lost them the food nets in this tank <laughs> no way so I rinse the I rinse the the food under tap water and then I rinse the net in here in the fishy. The, so the what's bits. the phosphate in here? You, you can't read it. It's yeah. just off the charts. Yeah. Yeah. So everything that we're, we t we're taught and learned from, or wherever you learn about reef keeping, phosphate's bad, keep them low, under 0.04. Yeah, this clearly is against <laughs> that idea. Look at, look at how these corals look. They're I just, do like having them lower for acros. I think acros don't have as good a color. As they really right, so. but then for just about everything else, yeah. I think we forget really sometimes how dirty these yeah. creatures are. Yeah. You should see uh, stuff the that Zoas he's got going, the phosphate, they're like that. Big. Let's see him. You said Zoa. That's my magic word. This way. Okay. I'm turned on now. <laughs> so <laughs> was, I pretend to care about acros. I show you guys torches, but I don't actually care. The only thing I care about, this is what we're talking about. This is where I want to be. Oh, man. And so this, you're running two bulbs T5? No. Oh, yeah. Two bulbs T5. And Reef Bright XHR. Nice. How long are these lights running for? Only eight. Eight hours? Is that both T5 and? No, I only run the T5s for four oh. hours. Wow, and the rest is just Reef Bright. Yeah. So, like, the power in here is like 50. Oh my god. And then when the T5s are on, it's 70. Zoas on top of Zoas on top of Zoas. Looks like everything is doing really well. Do you ever have a Zoa that just doesn't grow for you? That's just one you yes. keep trying? Oh, yeah. What yes. is it? Blue Hornet. Uh, no, I actually have Blue Hornets. They're right there. But um, not the Blue Hornets. They're right there. Mary Janes. Oh, okay. They don't grow for me. I buy them and I quickly sell them. There's always that one or two for whatever reason. They just Somebody else grows them like snot and they just can't. They just oh, yeah. don't happen. I also think some of these things you'll do really, really well for like two or three years. And then all of a sudden, they don't like you anymore. Yeah. Like, their butt kissers are a perfect example. I eat, I eat three, four hundred pounds, and they're gone. They were three hundred dollars a pound. I wonder if they deplete something in the water. They almost outcompete themselves for a, a certain nutrient or... Wow. There's obviously no pests in here. Do you guys keep any wrasses, just in case? I see copper there's beds. A six line in here. There's a, there's a copper band. Great Aptasia control. Do you ever beat Aptasia? I'm kind of to the point where I just think that you, you manage it. Yeah. You throw in copper band, you throw in peppermint, you never truly get rid of it. And there's all those places that they can hide, like your overflow, orders of your sun, you know. Everywhere. You said you have algae in here. These tanks look pretty clean to me, man. Oh, no way. Look at that. He's got to meet him basically right out of his hand. I don't have good luck keeping these. Some of these copper bands we've had for, what would you say, eight, eight years or more? Wow. Look at that. They're very tame. Such beautiful fish. Oh. Any this fish actually prefers to eat from my hand. No way. Look or out of the mouth of a blessing or something. <laughs> it's a little princess. Stealing, stealing food. He doesn't, he doesn't pick on the nice blastos you got hanging out over there? So it's crazy. He doesn't have a taste for blastos. Wow, is he from heaven? 
at all. None of them eat, I have Blastos in every tank, and none of the copper vans eat the Blastos, but they will devastate my acanthus. Look at the size of these. They look like mini acanthos. They're just falling out of the skeleton. Massive. Everything here looks super healthy, guys. Super, super healthy. Some, uh, they are truly pumped up on phosphates and nitrates. <laughs> that's that's the secret. Apparently here, ESV for salt. Oh, how about water change? Are we water changing? We do yep. 100 gallons every week if, if, you are, if we stay If you stay on 100 gallons out of how much? What are we talking? 800 gallon systems, and we only do eight, uh, like 100 gallons. 15% roughly. So we have capacity for 800 gallons if we have emergency we do water change. That's good, in case you have to, God forbid, swap everything out. Yeah, and we have it all plumbed so we can top off, we can do water changes by pumping it. One for fresh, one for salt, or one for fresh, one for salt, yeah. vice versa. Yeah. And then you guys... ESV will make us a 200 gallon uh, unit. Why ESV? Because we used to do swaps in Manhattan and Brooklyn mm -hmm. every single year. And uh, we met Bob Stark there. And we used ESV at the swaps. And we had such great success at all these swaps. And it works, and that's it. Just stick with it, it's, right? It's not for everyone because it's a four part salt, but. What does that mean? It means there's a bag of sodium chloride, magnesium, these are and two liquids. And there's a big bag of salt. Oh. So there's some measuring. More you can actually literally like use this salt in like soft morals and xenia and fresh mixed salt. They yeah. will stay open. And the other. Dimensional salt, it's one part, they all close up the surface top. Huh. The water's a little I'm kind of on the fence about trying a new salt. I'm wondering. Yeah. It's chemicals that manufacturers put in the salt to make it not plump and. Hmm. It's in this one. You guys open for walk ins? Is this like a retail store or are you more online? We're, we are primarily online. Um, but on Fridays we do, that's like our official day for people to come in. Hmm, kind of like that idea. One day a week, man. So was, so was, so was, so was, so was. These have always, like when I started in the hobby, they were popular. I think they're more now. They've never really waned in popularity. No, they are more popular now than. They are, right? And yeah, so the Acro tank and then these two tanks are the bulk of our sales. Acros. Acros and Zoas. Zoas and then Euphilia. That's what's hot. I guess you guys aren't importing wild zoa. You don't need Nothing. to. It's just so. No, so we'll much buy. Here. I'll buy zooanthids from other hobbies, and that's the only. That's the only place I'm what, ever going to buy. Um, what percentage would you say of the corals you're selling are cultured or grown here? The stuff that's going out the door. percent. Wow, ninety percent. That's amazing, right? Yeah, the only thing that's wild that we sell are we do bring in wild euphilia. And we keep them in a separate tank over there. Mm -hmm. We don't mix them. And then um, we buy wild Aussie hammers, pecans. I see some anemones hiding in the corner. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. These are the Detroit Sunbursts? No, these are, these are very cool. A gentleman named Andre. You know Andre. Ooh, uh, I know Andre very well. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Are originally from him. That's from our side. He look. brought them to me in, in Buffalo. Look at these famous cool. Canadian corals. They smell like maple syrup. <laughs> and they're all polite too. They're very nice. Sorry, cool. sorry. Hey, I'm an anemone, eh? <laughs> Beautiful. Look at the color. Everything in here is just super healthy. Why do you keep the rock? Just for some fish to kind of hide? I had this crazy idea for that exact reason. I'm like, well, maybe my fish will act more natural if they have a place to hide, a place to pick at things. And, and you know. Did it work? I guess. And I also thought that maybe with, you know, because the rock was all in the sump before. Yeah, and I. And no, really no flow. Mm. Those those are designed as settling tanks, and they do just that. Once every few months, we just siphon out the bottom, and they'll be foam in there. Yeah, so I just, I so I just wanted to bring a different dimension. Micron, so so flow there through the rock. Okay. Yeah, that is that is from a friend of ours. It was actually like from Rochester, I think, and uh, we bought it as a, just that little center eye. Yeah. And he said it was from Sulawesi. It's unique. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like a... It's, it's unique. Oh, I I would, yeah. This is yeah. not unique. This is cherry corals. <laughs> ah, there we go. Sorry, <laughs> my bad. Oh, uh, we are friends with Joe. I wish he was here, too. It'd be a party. I think I emailed them if we could stop by. And he said, we don't like Canadians, so... <laughs> <laughs> That's why we're here. No, he's busy or something. I don't know. Some lame excuse. Wow, look at this. Everything looks very, very These mature. are the same chalice. Just because I cut them, so I would get. So both. these are mainly also like just that's pretty I cool. Ended up, I ended up getting screwed, and I 
But how do you yeah, fight it? It looks like it's growing, encrusting completely there. onto that rack. Oh, yeah, they don't attach the acrylic very well. Oh, look at that. I wasn't kidding. Yeah, they just kind of end up hovering above. And you can even see it's lifting itself off. Do you ever have problems with them sort of reaching? Yes. Kind of going white? Anyone who says they don't have that problem is lying. Like, I'll have them grow up to about that size and then decide. Yeah. I'm going to start to reach from metal, here. Yeah, and I don't know why. I can't uh, figure out why they do. Nothing we've tried to stop it. Yeah. Really? Once it starts. Yeah, just, you know, I'm except, for, except for putting, putting it into the skank. Yeah, and then we have a little sea cucumber. Thank the skank. Yeah, it's literally... Let's go see it. <laughs> I'm like sort of, I'm upset to hear your corals are bleaching, but I'm a, I'm happy to know I'm not the only son of a bitch that this happens to. And it's it's the ones you like the most. I think that corals are actually conscious, and they yes. can pick up on energies. And when you like them too much, they kind of yeah. We, for years, you've said if you covet it, yeah. If you covet, it, you yeah. Yeah, if you covet they know. Yeah. You see, so just they, like women, you, you yeah. love them too much, they're gonna burn you. Tank so anything. All, all new things end up either staying in these carts forever until I can process them properly, mm -hmm. or they sit in there. And if it's a chalice that wants to bleach or has started, sometimes, sometimes if I put it in there and just ignore it. And this is actually an perfect example. This one had started to bleach. And I had had super success. That's it. For ages. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But now it's gone. Beautiful. Okay, so I need to just go back and set up a tank I don't care about. And you don't ne look at. Neglect. You don't look at it. Look at these guys. Actually, Steve from Top Shelf had an interesting theory. Because I don't treat anything in here ever, and that it's always just doing what it does. Just it just is. It just, and it that uh, I'm not fighting anything. It's just things are happening. That some some of them are just gonna work out. What's uh, what's going on here? So every time. Whenever I frag something, it all goes into this tank for a day. How come? Because I want to. Because if it smokes out, have you ever had a like a, uh, a bacterial infection that just runs rampant? Let it happen in here. It happens. It'll happen almost. You know, within eight hours, you're gonna know. And so I just, you know, you can see I take little, I take little bites out of corals. Nom, 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 nom. I'm weird. I cut in circles. You I don't, do. I don't think. Uh, I've never seen anyone frag quite like that. Well, you know. But I guess you want the frag to look. I want it to be marketable in a timely fashion. Yeah, you don't want to wait six months. And I months. always have a growth edge on the frag. Okay. And I never process more than half a tile at once because I feel like it'll stop it. That's a very interesting way to do it. I've never thought about that. Very different than the way we frag for sure. Definitely not like Cookie Monster came and took a piece out. <laughs> yeah, you'll see cookie, little bites out of every tile around. Inland. You don't see this too often. Griffin, I feel like, is the king of fragging, but these guys are making a comeback, huh? Yeah, I mean, they're out of Chicago. It's a good price on saw. Yeah. We have very few problems aside from broken blade, which happened Naturally. 10 minutes before you got here. Of course. Um, well, like this, this one, this one we can... When it starts to, like a griffin, I feel like I can't, I can never adjust it so it runs consistent. Mm. I can't get a whole day out of a griffin. You get a and blade. we tried a lot of griffins. But this one, like, when when this wears out, I buy a new pulley. Mm -hmm. Or, if it's really being finicky, I can shim this flywheel out and get another six months out of it. Yeah. So, you know... Unfortunately, the saws, you know, these are consumable for us. Yeah, yeah we just just run through them. them. Something the most that we can. That uh, LRS. About those two is the water reservoir on the back. You can fill that with tank water, and then it drips into the blade. So yeah, right, right, you're right always here. getting fresh water rather well. than running through the dirty yeah, water. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. run, we put iodine in this. Yeah, and so we're I'll sterilize the blade with straight lugals, mm -hmm. and then I'll run iodine while I'm cutting, and then from there. To there. How'd to you there. how'd you get into this? What did you do before this? Hobbyist gone. Oh, we have a landlord. I always have this as a hobby, like the last three years. This is no longer a hobby. <laughs> this is. Yeah, we took a little, little problem. That's how I think that's how a lot of these places start. Just hobbyist gone. Yeah, go pro. You go, you go pro. Yeah. It was, scary, it was scary making the move here. But you've yeah. been here already. What eleven years? You said. 
Yeah. 12, 11, 12, 10, something. What are in these beds over here? We got a couple more to look at. Yeah, so we've got. How do you keep track of everything? Oh no. Yeah, there's, this is, these are uh, tank, all tank grown eucalyptus. Any tips to keeping Afros. torch like looking this good and healthy and just freaking awesome? <laughs> well, we, this, because they're not wild and we don't ever put any wild things in here, mm -hmm. they have few, and we have to sterilize your equipment too. So I just feel like we have fewer bacteria to combat. Right. And, um, these are some of the healthiest torches I've ever seen. Thanks. And then we have, you know, some of the same, like you, you did the, in your Randy video, you had the, the Archimera, the two-tone, the two-type. Oh, the half-gold, half-green. Half I yeah. saw that over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's, yeah, he's yeah. the only one we've ever sold that to. <laughs> <laughs> That's where he got it from. Yeah. We sold one to Shane. Out of the small. Yeah. They came in on the last dinner shipment for the band. Just you know, so, they, so they, much they to look at. Any and you yeah. usually look at that. You're keeping acros next to torches, so high flow. Well, so you know, just just the acros are getting hammered. These mm -hmm. are getting, you know, the residual flow, residual flow coming back. back this way. Oh. And you like the gyres, huh? Yeah, you know, for these shallow tubs, there's really yeah. nothing better. Yeah. So, is. Mushrooms with some funky with some sponge. weird sponges. Wow. Yeah. Been there forever. The sponge has been there forever. We have made no effort to take it out. They look fine. They look happy. That's yeah. what people ask for. Like, oh, there you go. Sure. No, um, no Xenia, no Anthelia, no GSP. I, ha I do grow a GSP. It's going to show us the bombest GSP collection you've ever seen right now. Here in the States, we call it dragon fur. Really? I kind of like that better. Why do we call this green star palm? I don't know. Guys, my friend Rob came up with dragon fur, and it's I think it's a perfect name. I like it. That's one we grow. So both Those are Randy's ARC fireworks cloaks. I just still can't understand how you keep track. How do you know what, what's what, where? There's just like there's so much. There's a lot. Of there's a lot of coral. These are aquaculture only hammers. Beautiful. We don't do any, and some frog spots. We don't do any, we don't mix any wilds in here. And we, is that we just grow for pests? Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, like those, those, uh, you feel like eating flatworms don't really bother hammers as much, but I don't, I just, I've heard rumors and I've never seen them, but of a, of a parasitic copepod that eats euphilia. Mm. And I don't want those. Definitely and, not. And I don't want uh, flatworms. Look at the size of these acans. Just like the blastos, and if you notice, they're kind of like sort of on the edge. They don't need a lot of light. They do not. You could you could have them shaded, and they they'd, they'd still be happy. Like yeah, one I, of I, the. I feel like so. I yes. tune this one the, for the par to be between 50 and 70. Like over here, it's got to be quite a bit less. Yeah. And these lights just came on about an hour ago. They'll get a little bit puffier. Those are Chicago. The anemone snobs be able to tell the difference. These are all I can't tell the difference between any nymphs. Yeah, you like I can't know there's a Facebook group. It's just bonkers. dedicated to shit talking nymphs and which ones are which. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Like I there's just, a guy there are people on there that are saying that that anemone is the same as this anemone. Well that came from Tr Niagara or Canada, yeah. so that's the That's a candy Canada candy. explosion. We this, call it a candy car. Perfect. <laughs> I always tell people, just buy what you like. Don't get too mixed yeah, yeah, up yeah. with the names. If it catches your eye. Yeah, I literally don't care what anyone calls it. Because the next guy's going to call it something else. Uh, yeah, yeah, just yeah. buy what you like. Like these right here. Man, those are BSA cat eyes. They're just so big and so beautiful. And I'm always drawn to pink noahs. I don't know why. And they're so easy. Those ones are so easy. And what are you keeping your elements like calcium out, magnesium? Tanks here. What are you shooting so for? I don't test any of those things. So I would have to look at my huh? <laughs> I don't test anything but alkalinity. Oh really? I test the nitrate and phosphates. Oh there's no there's no board on this one. Nitrate phosphates so we don't get too high. But you're not concerned with calcium or mag or you just don't test them? I don't test for it. And wow. I'm not actively trying to adjust it. But alkalinity, yes. If you're, if you're using a two part solution, a quality two part solution, just out. You're oh. you're your calcium and all your other goodies that are in that solution, yeah. nitrate going to be within acceptable hmm. parameters. Alkalinity, you heard that. Really the most important though. So it might not work for everybody, but it works for us. It's, it's clearly working. You guys are doing something right. Oh man, in almost every 
tank in the corner, you're gonna find a basket with a crazy anemone. Really? Almost yeah, every don't single tank. Because, and, and there's no science to back it up, but we do think that some of those anemones don't get along. Ah, like they sting each other? Um, I'm try I can't remember the term. Chemical warfare? It's chemical warfare, but there's, a, there's a, I looked it up, oh. Chris. But I can't remember it now. Fancy terms. Yeah. And then, are these Springeri damsels, Springeri, whatever, those blue ones? Uh, I think they're blue devil. Yeah, probably blue devil. Well, they have that black spot. Yeah, that one, that one will bite you, so. Are you keeping definitely. them for pest reduction or just for extra nutrients? We, we, we usually don't buy those anymore. We, we do the ORA lemon damsels mm -hmm. because they eat, they eat flatworms and, and they yeah. pick up algae and they're just really busy and they don't get too big too fast. They don't bite as often. <laughs> Look at this. A little oh, bit and there's soft. your Anthelia and there's your Xenia. It's a Stitularia. These are really big. Fox coral. Oh. Fox coral. We never see these up in Canada. Super rare. Really? Never. Ever, ever, ever. Incredibly rare. What is this? Uh, <laughs> I don't even know what it's called. What Mer is that? Merlina Ampilata or something. No. I could just be making up names right now and half of you wouldn't know. But I try to remember the Latin names when Pocona? I can. It's not a Pocona chip. Uh, Brett knows what it is. Some we, potato chip it, coral, but I'm, the Latin name I, always escapes me. Yeah. Brett called it the green potato chip that, yeah. you, that you never want. <laughs> That's the one. Green potato chip coral. Look at these nice lobos hanging out. These guys just have so much healthy okay. and like, like it is Pavona. Oh, I was wrong. Look at how well encrusted these pieces are. Like, these are very old frags. This is, this must have been sitting here for at least a couple dies. months to get to this size, encrusted, well over the plug. And all this stuff is available on your site? I, I was, yep. More or yep. less? Wow. Yeah, well, there's a hang-on uh, rack in every tank that has what's on the site. Ah, so if I want to buy so to that, I can go on the site and find those set uh, Or what you see is what you get site. So you, there's literally a photo of that coral on the site, and that's the one you'll get in your mm -hmm. That's how I started doing this. There was a guy doing what you see is what you get, yeah, and everything you order is what you see is not what down. you get. <laughs> <laughs> no, I couldn't believe he was the biggest like, fragger in our whole like country, and that's, that's what yep. kind of led me to get into it. Oh, look at this. This is a strange enemy. Don't have that one. Borbonian? No, Bor... Borman? Borman. Yeah. He's funky. Don't pet it? Don't pet it. I want to pet it now that you say that. How bad's this thing? I don't know. I, haven't, I actually got that as rock a few months back and I thought I'd give it a try. Give it a little and, touch. Uh, yeah, I haven't... Uh, I, I like, I like touching it. things when people say don't touch it. Okay. <laughs> torch, torch. Oh, wow. A lot more torch. Oh, look at the Ghanis. Ghanis, high flow or low flow? These are just getting kind of moderate, you know, but they're up high, but they're off to the side, so they're not getting a ton of light, direct light, probably 80 par. Indirect, lower light, medium flow. These are all getting about ready to frag soon, because they're... I'd say so. They're getting pretty well, you know, like crusty growth. They look great. Yeah. So these could probably be cut in half soon. Who does the fragging here? We both do. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of a random thing, we, you know, for low on something, we'll kind of target it for fragging and uh, try to get it done that week and then it heals up for a week or two and give it then it's ready to ready to sell. It is a pretty funky leather. Yeah, it's real long, but, uh, oh yeah. I always, like, I always like asking Pat because we... It's like really flushed out, everything looks really, really healthy. We've got, he was saying that he's got some zoas here that are acting as a buffer between the encrusters because even though they're encrusting, they can sting each other. I like that. That's, that's a brilliant idea. That's so smart. Right? Using the zoas in, in between. Uh -huh. Yeah. They still get stuck, but they don't die from it. Yeah, they, they survive, right? How they frag bounce mushrooms with rubber bands. Check this out. Magic carpet. So oh, it's being rubber banded. Cool. I would never thought to do it like that. That's so smart. And so just you just tie it and then leave it. Yeah, you just leave it and then the other half, if it's not attached, it's gonna attach before it ends up getting pinched Could off. you do it this way and that way and maybe do You absolutely forward? could, but you know, why, so I, I'm not gonna do that because you're not in a rush anyway. I'm not in a rush. You can be real accurate about where the mouth is with that too, where you start you start cutting it with a saw, the vibration makes it close up, but you, but you don't know where it is. Are my eyes deceiving me, or are there no skimmers on this system here? There are no skimmers. No skimmers. What? How about here? That one is that's running a skimmer. How about the one with the zoas? That skimmer's off at the moment. 
Is but I've, I've run these for six months without a skimmer. Actually, so in fairness, wow. I used to keep my phosphates at like 0.2, and then I did go, you know, for like six, eight months without skimmers at all because I wanted to experiment. And uh, so those those are high, and then I'm having a tough time getting these guys. I was about to ask you, any dosing of amino acids on these tanks? Not anymore. No aminos? No aminos. And that's for coralline because you said it grows too, also grows coralline? Well, for us, it grew, it, it made coralline algae grow faster. And that you don't want in this sort of setting when you're doing and, commercially? And that's, 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 yeah, that's more chemicals that we have to replace. You know, Sucking up your calcium. Yeah, yeah it's almost yeah. like supporting a coral that you don't want. And some corals yeah. can't out compete the coralline algae. Yeah, if it encrusts the plug faster yeah, than the coral. So no aminos. How about spot feeding or foods for corals, stuff like that? We using? do feed, um, shout out to Philip, Reef Rights. Oh, hello, bonjour, Mr. Gilbert. Mr. Gilbert, yes, we, we love his reef primer and we love Paul Glad Reef Rights. Good to know, I should have brought my hoodie, damn it. I have it, you yeah. can put it on. Oh. <laughs> should have been wearing it though. He, he, I said I love your new hoodie, he sent me. They're so <laughs> soft. I know, it's like, They're the, the freaking... zipper's on the wrong side. Right? That's how we do it's it, weird. it's in Canada. It's so weird. Man. So just reef rights. Just reef rights and I don't, I don't feed everything very, you know, I don't feed everything. I'm only feeding the name brand Acanthastrias. I'm feeding the expensive pavias and the expensive chalices. So you don't spot feed like the entire... I'm not spot feeding this whole thing. No, just, just one by one? Just, I'm just, I, I'll have a, I'll have some in my hand, I'll be like... Grr, Show grr, us, grr. let's do it. I don't have any left. Oh, we're out of... Phil, so we would have brought some down for you. So re <laughs> send some over. This is a message for you. Let's go get some refrids. Yeah, so I just put it in my hand and then I... Feeding demonstration of Canadian food. <laughs> You gotta feed the meltdown fabia because you want the meltdown fabia to grow. Please grow. Say a little prayer for the meltdown. I'm glad that Randy's is about the same size too. He's not grown it faster than me. Do you guys have a grow off going on with this squirrel? No. Do you guys text, text each other every couple of weeks? We do talk. Randy and I are old friends. Hey, how big's yours, loser? <laughs> Look at the size of this bottle. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, you, do you remember Hans and Franz? Oh yeah, buddy, absolutely. <laughs> so we're here to pump you up. <laughs> so they they made a movie. They they wrote a movie. Conan O'Brien, Rob really? Schmeigel, uh, Kevin Nealon, and Dana Carvey wrote a movie called yeah. Hans and Franz: The Girly Man Dilemma. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what these old people are talking about. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't know either. I'd heard of it. I was like, I, I know the name, but. I <laughs> And um, so, anyway, on on Conan O'Brien's podcast, they're reading the script. Yeah, it was made. It was done twenty years ago. Yeah. Never got made. Arnold Schwarzenegger was supposed to be in it. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Broadcast. Let's put this to rest. We're gonna see. Do well, he, he said that they they close up and they shoot all. They empty their body cavity of water. So how could they be eating? Hey, Vlad. It actually makes sense, Vlad. It does. It does. But we're gonna see. Apparently, this food, Reefroids, was originally made just to feed those. Oh, really? To flower, yeah. We originally designed just to feed flower pots. And then I think it turned out, oh shit, I mean, oh poop, uh, everything likes to eat it. <laughs> I'm sorry, kids, you know I try not to swear on the channel. I didn't know this was made in Canada. It yeah. is. It's owned by a very friendly, bald French guy. Yeah, who lives in Canada. Philip, makes... Philip, Phil, yeah. Phil made. Moonshiners. Uh, I try not to drink so much these days. <laughs> what are we looking at? This is a pretty intricate. So you do an ICP test. And then you get a, which uh, which brand of ICP are you using? So this is an Oshiamo ICP. I've never heard of that it. That Andre recommends. It's oh. in uh, Austria. Interesting. And then uh, you'll get what you need to dose every month or every two weeks, so depending on how Cobalt, you chromium, iodine, zinc, potassium, nickel. Yeah. So these elements, these one, two, three, four, five are daily elements. And then the rest are uh, monthly correction. Wow. And then I make a few of my own, um, you know, mixing up some, some Brightwell products. What are we um, using here? Some Mang fluoride. Manganese, yep. cobalt, chromium, iron, selenium, zinc, nickel. And these ones are your daily that you're adding 
Yeah, so those are very small traces and you actually don't want them to show up in an ICP. Hmm. So you just dose a very small amount every day that the coral needs. And then if it shows up in an ICP, you, you back it's it down. too much. Bit. Yeah. And is that but just it never for, gets to a toxic level. Is that here for the acro system primarily? Yeah. Wow! Oh, we just had some of the whites come on. Yeah, you can really appreciate some of some of the colors and how nice they are. Uh, but you're not doing that sort of thing on the entire. No, no. no. Occasionally, every three months or so, I'll do an ICP on the other ones, and then I'll I, I might bump up a few the other ones, but not. It really shows like a, a lot of attention and care is obviously going into keeping this arrangement of acro here. Do you guys have any plans to expand or grow or future plans or what's going on? Uh, this is kind of what we can handle right now um, and it's, you know... There's a lot. It's a, it's a, it's a lot as it is um, and we're, we're both fortunate to do well in this industry uh, with what we have going here and uh, I don't see the, us really expanding much anytime soon. Uh, we did talk about moving to another building. Why? Oh but then our, our landlord uh, got us a new uh, dehumidifier and furnace. Okay. To the tune of like twenty thousand dollars, and it made it so comfortable in here. We started doing improvements, like we have a rooftop natural gas generator. Uh, we redid the lobby. You need a standby generator here. Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, one day without power, you guys, or two days, God forbid, you're you're in trouble. Well, I've in the past, I've spent a week sleeping in my car, feeding gas to a generator. So we did have big cart generators that were enough to run some of the things off and on. But this generator will run everything like nothing happened. It'll even run the air conditioner. It'll just switch over to yep. natural gas powered generator. Yep. Is this a uh, pearlberry over here? Yeah. Man, it looks so good. This is a piece that's always escaped me. Never had luck. Some beautiful anacropora. They look a little bit refrafty. Yep, that's the golden red. Oh, yeah. And the Tropicana? Yep. So nice to see that stuff like internationally. So cool. Stuff that we find in our own backyards. I noticed that you have urchins too. Yeah, I love urchins. They are, are great. They are a little, little hardier to long lived than snails. And uh, I like them on the small side, the tuxedo urchins. They don't pick stuff the up. The bigger ones tend to carry off some of the frags, which can be problematic. And this helps, I guess, to keep the coralline at bay, huh? That too. Yep. Yeah. Beautiful little tuxedo. Nice blue color. What do you call this? This is not forest fire, right? Uh, that's called emerald fire. Emerald so it's fire. a little different color. Yep. Uh, I want a piece of this. I saw some for the first time in England because I've never seen it before. It's almost like reverse forest fire. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. I really would kill to take a piece of this with me home, but hard corals require special permits. And it's called the pocket permit. You just take it, put it in your pocket, and shut up and don't say anything. <laughs> so as long as you have a pocket permit, you're good to go. No, you really shouldn't. You're just supposed to have proper CITES and documents and maybe fish and wildlife stuff. People ask us all the time if we can ship to the U.S. Why would I ship to the U.S.? Just order from Cherry Corals. They have everything I have, then ten so much more. So it's all here, guys. Are these racks permanent fixtures? Like Those acros are not coming off, right? Yeah, some of them get to be that way. Um, I do need to thin out some stuff in here. It's just getting too much. Yeah. And then we do, like, you can tell I scraped the stray probably like a week ago, and it's already it's getting back. covered with coral and other algae. People buy these products like Purple Up and Coraline Grow from Red Sea. I think hobbyists always want Coraline. Unless yeah. you're in this setting, you don't realize what a nuisance. Oh, yeah. It's actually horrible. Yeah. yeah. It would be cool if there's a product, Coraline, stop. <laughs> Just right. get out of my life, please. Coraline Divorce. This is crazy. 24 karat something, Sunset Ultra. What are you? Uh, really? That's a Jason Fox solar flare. Wow. That is so cool. Yellow, green, olive, finishes orange. Like I always say on the videos, guys, the camera is never going to do these things justice. These are always so much nicer in person. Just beautiful. I made some YouTube videos about like 11 years ago and then never really made any. <laughs> <laughs> Takes time. Yeah. But I enjoy it. I think most people don't realize how much work goes into it. You hear that, guys? You guys don't understand how much work goes into it. I got up at 5 a.m. this morning, then drove to a different country, picked up the camera, talked for an hour, and now these crazy people want to go mountain bike riding. Yeah. This guy is so happy in there. If you guys want to see more on um, what they're doing here, this intricate and fine tuning of dosing trace elements on the Acro Tank, check out this guy. Das uh, Sprechen Sie Deutsch, there's a German in Texas, Reef Moonshiners.
This is why we actually drove all the <laughs> so way here. So this is the big part, why we're really at This guy's got a mountain line, bike. Line Hold on, too. you think I'm kidding? Look, look what's in the... You think I'm joking? Look, look what's in the trunk. It makes me bring this stupid bike all the way to Detroit. Look, couldn't even fit anyone else. See that? Pat's mountain bike. They're gonna go mountain bike riding now. I don't even get to go. Briefing fam, we're gonna wrap up this episode of Fragbox TV. I hope you guys learned something, enjoyed it, laughed, cried, whatever. You know we're gonna do it again soon. I wanna say thank you to these guys very much for taking time out of your very, very busy Thursday. They have very important things to do like go mountain bike riding. Uh, they don't have time for Canadians over here. But if you want to find any of their corals, they're all available online at cherrycorals.com. Give us a subscribe button if you like the content and you want to see more videos like this. And we will see you guys back here on the next video of Fragbox TV. Bye for now. Look at this guy. Disassembled it. To bring it in the car. <laughs> putting it back together. He's putting his frags back in place. <laughs> Need some glue? Do you know what you're doing? I've never done this before. What a shithead. Oh,